I mocked him jokingly and told him he was weak, but he got mad over it and did this. Ever been in a situation where a little teasing spirals into a full-blown disaster? A situation whereby you did something wrong to a particular person, and they retaliated by making sure you absolutely regretted it? Have you ever been in a situation where the person sets a trap for you and carefully weaves a web of deceit for weeks just so you can absolutely ruin your relationship? Because if you've not been in a situation like that, you should thank your lucky stars. Why am I saying this? Because I have been, and I think it might just ruin my relationship. I think my relationship is done for, but I honestly don't want it to be so. My name is Rose, and I've got a story that'll make you think twice before poking fun at someone. I'm posting here because I want to rant, and also because any advice would be appreciated. I'm 26 years old, and my boyfriend Nathan is also 26. We met on Tinder, found out we went to the same college, clicked instantly, and soon found ourselves deep in a serious relationship. We have been dating for about five years now. I genuinely thought this was the person I would marry and spend the rest of my life with. Now Nathan was a great guy, kind, caring, and always looking out for me. But one day I made a playful jab at him, calling him weak in a moment of jest. Little did I know that harmless comment would set off a chain reaction of revenge and deceit. Now I know you might be wondering why did you mock him? Honestly, I was partially being playful. And there was also the fact that Nathan had always been known as a bit of a simp. He always went out of his way to please me and make sure I was happy. This had even led to a few of our friends even playfully mocking me and calling him a simp. He didn't mind though and would even joke along with them. I guess I always took Nathan's love and devotion for granted. He was like a rock in my life, always there to support me, always putting my needs before his own. It's easy to get comfortable in a relationship, isn't it? You start to believe that things will always be the same, that your partner will always be by your side, no matter what. The day everything changed started off like any other. We were casually chatting, joking around about someone or something. I honestly don't recall the details. In the midst of our banter, I playfully teased Nathan, saying he should watch his back because I might just leave him for someone else. It was meant to be a lighthearted remark, a playful jab in the midst of our laughter. Nathan laughed and said I would never leave him, to which I then playfully said that I just might. I said he was weak and a bit of a simp, so he should probably watch me. It was all jokes honestly, but Nathan's reaction caught me off guard. Instead of laughing it off, he fell silent. I could sense a shift in the air, a subtle tension that hadn't been there before. It was as if my words had struck a nerve and awakened something within him that he had kept hidden. Looking back now, I realize how insensitive my comment was. Nathan had always gone above and beyond to make me happy, to show me love in ways both big and small. Calling him weak and a simp in that moment was like dismissing everything he had ever done for me. It was a wake-up call, not just for him, but for me too. It made me realize the weight of my words and the impact they could have on our relationship. But little did I know this innocent banter would set off a series of events that would change things between us. After my playful banter with Nathan, things between us started feeling off. I noticed Nathan wasn't as protective as before, which was a big change because he used to always have my back, sometimes to the point of being overbearing. He'd ask about my day, check if I got home safe from work when he wasn't home, and just generally be attentive. But after that conversation, it was like a switch flipped. He stopped checking in as often, texts became fewer, and calls were more sporadic. It felt like he had withdrawn, leaving this gap between us. I tried to write it off as work stress or something temporary, but deep down I knew it was more than that. I started missing how he used to hold me close in crowds, making sure I felt safe. Now it was like he had lost that protective instinct. It left me feeling exposed, like a safety net had been pulled away. I couldn't help but wonder if my teasing had pushed him away, if I had somehow caused this shift in our relationship dynamics. I noticed that things had indeed changed between us, but I wasn't sure how to bridge that gap or if it was even possible anymore. As Nathan and I lived together, our dynamic was such that he took on most of the household chores despite earning significantly more than me. He enjoyed cooking, cleaning, and doing the dishes, especially since he knew how much I disliked those tasks. It was a routine we had settled into, and it worked well for us. However, after that playful conversation, I noticed a shift in Nathan's behavior around the house. He stopped taking the initiative to do the chores he used to handle with joy. Cooking became less frequent. Cleaning sessions were no longer as thorough, and the pile of dishes in the sink started to grow. At first, I brushed it off, thinking he might be busy or preoccupied with work. But as days turned into weeks, it became evident that something had changed. 
Nathan seemed less invested in our home life, almost as if he had withdrawn from the little things that used to bring us joy. I tried to pick up the slack, but it wasn't the same. I missed the days when Nathan would surprise me with a delicious dinner or clean the apartment just to see me smile. It felt like a part of our connection had faded, leaving a void in our shared responsibilities and, more importantly, in our relationship. At first, I must admit I felt a sense of relief when Nathan became less overbearing and didn't fuss over every detail of my whereabouts. It was liberating to have the freedom to go out with my friends without constantly updating him or worrying about his reactions. I could plan spontaneous weekend getaways or spend the night with my friends without feeling suffocated by messages or calls from Nathan. It was like a breath of fresh air to have that space and independence. I could focus on myself more, pursue my hobbies, and reconnect with friends without feeling guilty or obligated to constantly check in with Nathan. It felt like a weight had been lifted off my shoulders, and I appreciated the newfound freedom in our relationship. However, as time went on, I began to realize that this newfound freedom came at a cost. The lack of communication and engagement from Nathan started to feel like indifference. I missed the times when he would show concern or take an interest in my plans. The absence of his messages or calls, while I initially liked that, now felt like a void in our connection. I started to question whether this shift in our dynamic was healthy for our relationship. While I enjoyed the independence, I also longed for the closeness and intimacy that had once defined our bond. As Nathan's behavior continued to change, I started noticing the absence of those little gestures that used to mean so much to me. He stopped opening the car door for me, something he always did without fail before. It may seem like a small thing, but those acts of chivalry were symbols of his care and attention. Moreover, Nathan's attitude towards finances shifted as well. He earned significantly more than I did, and he used to take care of our financial needs without any complaints. If I needed money for shopping or any other expenses, he would readily provide it without hesitation. It was a comfortable arrangement that worked well for us. However, after what happened, Nathan's generosity seemed to drop. He became more frugal with his money, and I found myself having to ask for financial support, which I had never had to do before. It created this sense of unease and dependency that I wasn't accustomed to. I felt like I had lost not just his emotional support, but also the financial security that his income provided. The lack of these small but meaningful gestures and financial support added to the growing distance between us. Well, as the distance between Nathan and me grew, I found myself seeking validation and attention elsewhere. It started innocently enough, just casual conversations and harmless flirting with people I met in social settings or online. These interactions provided a temporary distraction from the emptiness I felt in my relationship with Nathan. Then as time went on, I noticed that I was seeking these interactions more frequently. The attention and compliments I received from others filled a void that was growing deeper within me. It was as if I craved that sense of being desired and appreciated, something that seemed to be missing in my relationship with Nathan. And I know you might be thinking, why didn't you just try to talk to Nathan well when I tried to talk to Nathan about what I was feeling? He brushed off my concerns, and he would even gaslight me into thinking I was overthinking or projecting my insecurities onto our relationship. He would invalidate my feelings, make me doubt myself, and even question whether I was being irrational. This only made things worse. I felt unheard and misunderstood, and it pushed me further toward seeking validation outside of my relationship. As time continued to pass, the distance between Nathan and me only seemed to widen. Despite my efforts to mend our relationship, nothing seemed to work. Nathan had closed himself off emotionally, and no matter how hard I tried to communicate or reconnect, it felt like hitting a wall. The frustration and loneliness I felt reached a breaking point, and as you might have already guessed, it led to a moment of weakness where my harmless flirting crossed a line into full-on cheating. It was a mistake I deeply regretted, and I knew it was wrong. It happened only once, but the guilt still weighs heavily on me. What makes matters worse is that I didn't confess to Nathan about my infidelity. I was ashamed and afraid of his reaction. I knew it would devastate him, and I couldn't bear to see the pain in his eyes. So I hid it. The realization of how far apart Nathan and I had drifted hit me like a ton of bricks when I found out about his huge promotion and the house he bought without informing me. It was a devastating blow, and the way I found out made it even more painful. I still remember the shock and embarrassment I felt when our mutual friends casually mentioned Nathan's promotion and his new house in conversation. I was taken aback, not just by the news itself, but by the fact that Nathan hadn't deemed it necessary to share such significant milestones with me, 
his partner. What made it sting even more was the fact that we had always talked about getting a house together. It was a dream we both shared, and I had imagined us taking that step as a couple. The realization that Nathan had gone ahead and made such a major decision without involving me felt like a betrayal of our shared dreams and aspirations. So yeah, I decided to confront Nathan, and it was a turning point that shattered any remaining illusions I had about our relationship. I realized that he had been pushing me away and gaslighting me, making me doubt my own feelings and perceptions. Confronting him was supposed to be a moment of clarity, a chance for us to address our issues and work towards a solution. However, I'm sure you've already guessed that it didn't go as I imagined. Nathan's response was unexpected and hurtful. He accused me of disrespecting and insulting him, and he used that as justification for his changed behavior. He argued that he had always been the one putting in the effort and that he saw no point in continuing a relationship where his efforts were not appreciated. What cut deepest was when Nathan revealed that he knew about my infidelity. It was like a dagger to my heart, realizing that he had found out about my mistake and had been holding it against me. He was very angry and then he stormed off. Now I feel like I'm at a crossroads. I feel like I'm losing or have already lost the relationship that once meant everything to me. Yes, I made a mistake, but it was born out of feeling neglected and unappreciated. Nathan may have been a simp in some ways, but he was a good simp, and I didn't want him to stop caring or making efforts for our relationship. So here I am reaching out to Reddit for advice. What should I do? Is there any way to salvage what's left of our relationship? Is there any way to get Nathan to forgive me? I just want my old Nathan back. Update. Hello Reddit. It's been a while since my first post, and I've received a lot of requests for an update, so here I am. I want to address some of the comments and DMs I received after my previous post. Firstly, I want to acknowledge the hateful comments and DMs I received. They were hurtful, and I understand that my actions have consequences. A lot of people said I was trying to narrate the story in a way that painted Nathan as the villain, but no, I'm not trying to paint Nathan as the villain or absolve myself of responsibility. I know that I made a mistake, and I take full accountability for it. Many of you suggested couples therapy and individual therapy and I appreciate those suggestions. It's something I've been considering as I realize the need to work on myself and our relationship. Regarding financial dependence, I agree that it was not wise of me to rely entirely on Nathan. I work in a field that honestly doesn't pay well, and Nathan, being more financially stable, took on more responsibilities. It became a pattern, and I got accustomed to it. However, I should have been more responsible and independent financially. Nathan had just always been more financially smart and with him being the man in the relationship, I just left things up to him. Some comments mentioned that cheating is a deal breaker, and while I understand that perspective, every relationship is unique. Cheating was a mistake on my part, and I regret it deeply. However, I believe in forgiveness and second chances, especially if there's genuine love and commitment. I believe Nathan will forgive me. We've been together for a very long time. He knows that me cheating was a mistake, and I know he will get over it. Ultimately, I'm here seeking advice and guidance. I want to know if there's a way to rebuild trust and salvage what's left of our relationship. I'm aware that Nathan may not forgive me easily, but I'm willing to do whatever it takes to make amends and work towards a better future together. It's crazy how some folks on social media jump to conclusions about me just from a few posts. They're calling me a narcissist, unfeeling and entitled without really knowing me or my story. They act like they've got it all figured out, saying I'll see things differently when Nathan leaves me. But relationships are way more complicated than that. You can't judge someone's life from a few online updates on posts. I have texted Nathan and he says he is on his way home. We are probably going to talk and I will update on that. Update. Hey Reddit, it's me again. I feel it's important to keep you updated, so here's the latest. Nathan returned home and we had a much needed conversation. I suggested couples therapy as a way to work through our issues. But Nathan was leaning towards breaking up. I had to plead with him not to give up on us just yet and to give therapy a chance. We agreed that if therapy didn't help, we would then consider breaking up. Despite the challenges, I still love Nathan and want to salvage our relationship, so I'm cautiously optimistic. Plus, there's the practical aspect. I rely on him for a lot of things. We found a therapist with excellent reviews and booked our first session. I'll keep you posted on how it goes. Update. Hey Reddit, I'm back with another update. Despite the negativity I faced on here, like I've gotten lots of DMs and comments, I believe it's important to keep you all informed. Our first therapy session was a bit rocky. Nathan had been keeping to himself a lot, and despite my efforts to engage him with special nights out or deep conversations, 
he still remained distant and reserved. We even had an argument during this time, which was about money. I asked him for some financial help, which he declined. For our first session, we discussed various issues and challenges. I brought up Nathan's reluctance to share money and his emotional distance. I also mentioned how sensitive he seemed about a playful comment I made. However, the therapist pointed out that Nathan's feelings were valid and it was okay for him to express emotions like anyone else. I'll keep you all updated on how things progress from here. We went through a few more therapy sessions and it became clear that things weren't improving as we had hoped. Nathan expressed his thoughts and he told me that he had deeply considered our relationship but couldn't find it in himself to forgive me. He opened up about how he felt he had always been the one putting in significant effort into our relationship, shouldering responsibilities and trying to make me happy. He said that it was very hurtful for me to mock him as weak and that me calling him a simp struck a chord. Nathan also did admit that he has purposely tried to gaslight me because he was so hurt. During our last session, Nathan then finally came clean. He wanted to break up. He mentioned that he had been working on the house he bought and now that it was ready, he planned to move in there. To be honest, hearing that news left me in a panic. I relied on Nathan for so much, financially and emotionally. Without his support, I wouldn't be able to afford the lease on my own. The rent was simply too high. Moving back in with my parents wasn't an option either, given how crowded their house already was with my siblings and their families. Plus, I didn't really have any friend that would let me move in. I was now feeling desperate. I pleaded with Nathan to reconsider, to give our relationship a few more chances through therapy. I knew deep down that losing him would drastically change my life, and I wasn't sure how I would navigate through everything ahead without his presence and support. There was no hiding it. I was broke, and without Nathan, I would definitely fall. As much as I pleaded and begged, Nathan remained stubborn in his decision to break up. He expressed remorse but explained that he needed to move forward with his life without me. In the following days, he came over to pack his belongings. I tried everything to stop him from emotional appeals to physically attempting to restrain him, but I guess that only seemed to anger him further. What made matters worse was that I had already spent my last paycheck, and so I was in a financial bind until the next month. With desperation starting to set in, I reached out to our mutual friends for help. I told them that Nathan was leaving me but didn't disclose the full truth about the cheating, knowing they would likely blame me if they knew. I asked them to talk to Nathan, hoping they could convince him to reconsider. However, instead of mediating, our friends bombarded Nathan with calls and messages, pushing him until he revealed the truth about my infidelity. That must have changed their perception of the situation entirely because they turned against me. They criticized me for not being honest with them and said it was disgusting that I had omitted such crucial information intentionally. The betrayal I felt from both Nathan's departure and our friend's reaction was overwhelming. I felt like I was running out of options, so I turned to our parents for help. I begged my parents to intervene and speak to Nathan and help convince him to reconsider or at least provide me with some financial support to cover the rent and bills until I could figure things out. I also reached out to Nathan's parents, hoping they would understand and help mediate the situation. However, things didn't go as planned. I'm not sure what Nathan told them, but both sets of parents turned against me. Nathan's parents, along with mine, seemed to side with him completely. They were disappointed in me and echoed the sentiment that I was to blame for the situation. It was honestly very disheartening to see them take Nathan's side and not offer any support or understanding. After trying everything, I reached out to Nathan directly, hoping he'd understand. But he accused me of trying to ruin his reputation and said any sympathy he had was gone. Feeling desperate, I even went to Nathan's workplace to talk, but he threatened a restraining order instead. It's crazy that after we've been together for so long, he's serious about ending things completely. Now I'm stuck. Friends and family turned against me. Nathan won't help, and I'm lost on what to do next. It's tough and uncertain, and I'm really struggling to figure it out. Any advice would be appreciated. Update. This is probably my last update. Things have been really tough, and the negative comments and messages have been getting to me. People are calling me crazy and delusional and said I was stuck in my head. A lot of people even expressed sympathy and pity for Nathan more than me and said that they would probably have gone ahead to file a restraining order if they had an ex like me. Honestly, I was hoping for some understanding or support, but it's clear that's not happening. It feels like everyone has turned their backs on me and I'm in a really tough spot. Next month's rent is a big question mark. I might not be able to afford it with how expensive things are here in my state and the fact that there's a housing crisis. 
and finding a roommate hasn't been easy. If I can find someone to share expenses with, maybe I won't have to move out right away. But so far, no luck. Thanks to those who followed my story and offered advice. It's been a wild ride, and I appreciate the support. My husband ended our marriage over a few flirtatious texts. It wasn't as if I had done anything with the senders of the text, just a few harmless photos and words we exchanged, and my husband decided to call off our marriage of five years. Although we had been having our problems before then, this had seemed to be the icebreaker in my marriage and I just couldn't believe it. My marriage was over, my life was over, and my husband made sure I paid for flirting with other men while I was married to him. Can you guys believe that? It wasn't as if I had cheated on him or anything. Maybe I had wanted to, but that didn't give him the right to up and end our marriage just like that. Didn't I get to have a say in my marriage too? Even though he had caught me on a date, it had just been a date and nothing more. Then he had searched my phone and made me show him the texts I had with other men outside our marriage, and my husband decided to divorce me and ruin my life in the process. I hadn't expected to be caught, that's for certain, and do I regret it? Yes, I do. This was one of those moments I could go back in time and wish I had never begun flirting with other men. My marriage would have still been intact and I wouldn't become a laughingstock in my city and have to move out from the disgrace and embarrassment that I had caused myself. My name is Naya, and I'm 29 years old going on 30 in a few months. My husband's name is Paul, middle name so someone I know won't stumble on this and relate it back to him, and he's about 34 years old. I had met my husband at a work conference in England. I was doing my master's at the University of Chicago, so I had gone there as a requirement for my thesis. It was like a research work kind of thing. And we had sat next to each other. He was also based in Chicago, so we had hit it off. I was just turning 23 at that time. I remember how lovely it was meeting him. He made sure I didn't have any trouble throughout the conference, and I understood what was going on. After the event, we had exchanged contacts in case I wanted to ask more questions concerning my project. He was thoughtful and helpful and I had never experienced a random stranger helping me, so he stuck to my mind like glue. As fate would have it, I ran into him a month after the conference at a bar. How small could Chicago be that I had to run into him in my very city? I took it as fate, and after that night at the bar, we became close and began seeing each other. We dated for about 11 months, and then he proposed to me and we got married. Our wedding ceremony was a small and intimate one, and we just had our friends and family over, and we got married lol. First year of marriage was great and all, and the second year too. I had finished my master's before he had proposed, and then he told me he didn't want me working because he would do all the providing. Who would say no to that? Third and fourth year of marriage was a breeze, and by the fifth year of my marriage with him, my husband was looking to expand his business and wasn't forthcoming with the money. We had made a pact to save for our children, so by our fifth or sixth year of marriage we could start having children, and we wouldn't have to worry about giving them the best of everything. But then my husband suddenly changed because of the business expansion he wanted to embark on. Yep. He took out everything from our future children's savings account. I knew because I was a joint owner of the account, so they alerted me to withdrawals. And when I mean he took out everything, I mean everything. There wasn't a single dime left. I had confronted him about it, and this was when we started having problems in our marriage. He was like, if I was so concerned about it, then I should put the money in there and not take it out. He became a whole new person. He would take trips for over two weeks and not tell me and then just pop in like nothing's happened. When we had another argument again, he told me he was doing it for the good of the family and the business expansion was taking all his time. I had no argument about that. LOL, he was making the money while I was staying home. I really didn't want to argue with him because I knew I wasn't offering any sustenance. The trips kept on happening spontaneously. He would disappear and move back home. I didn't complain, but then when I had to complain was when he stopped giving me money to stock up the house and money for my personal needs. That was when I had to speak up. I wasn't seeing my husband and our sex and love life was almost to the point of vanishing and then he stopped sending in money. I drew the line at that. If he wasn't sending it back home, then who was he spending his money on? I confronted him about it and then he told me I should go get a job if I wanted to stock up the house. I should get a job or something and stop disturbing him. He had just flipped out of nowhere until this point I didn't know what had went wrong. We quarreled on that day and I didn't see my husband for another two weeks from then. Can you imagine this sort of thing happening to you? Like who just disappears on their wife for two weeks? No phone calls, no text messages, not even a handwritten letter to say he was okay or ask if I was okay? Well, I took his advice since he didn't want to provide for me anymore. I went out for job hunting. 
Ed. Yeah, I left home to hunt for a job that would give me money and I wasn't fruitful. All the job offers that fit my portfolio I saw were not within close distance of my city. They were either in another city or another state and telling my husband that wasn't going to be palatable. I knew he wasn't going to agree from the start and I wasn't going to go work in some cheap asterisk SS bakery or coffee shop. I didn't do my masters to stoop to that level so I had to borrow money from my friend to stock up my house so I wouldn't have died of hunger by the time my husband got back. My husband got back two weeks later and took off again and when I went to meet my friend for financial assistance, she told me I needed to find work and I couldn't keep borrowing money from her without paying back. She told me I could open an escort profile on social media and be paid to go on dates with people since my husband wasn't around much and didn't want to take care of me. I might as well let another man do what he wasn't doing and enjoy life. I didn't take her advice though. I did the very worst LOL. I went extra. I sold my N asterisk to pictures. I never planned it and didn't mean for it to happen. It wasn't as crass as it sounded if you read it in your head. It wasn't as if I was doing it because I didn't have money. It just happened out of the blue and I couldn't stop and it was giving me money on the side. I guess I didn't want to stop. And my husband caught me and my marriage ended. Let me explain what happened. With my husband gone on his business trip to devil knows where, I had used the money my friend gave me on a grocery store run. Imagine a whole master's degree earner borrowing money from her friend. I was pissed with my husband at this period for abandoning us. And with that anger, I had gone to at least pretend to stock up our fridge. It was there I bumped into a very hot guy, and I literally bumped into like scattered all his goods on the floor, bumped into him. I had been thinking about my husband and how I was going to get back at him for making me stoop so low when I had bumped into the hot stranger. I had quickly apologized and the stranger offered to pay for my things at the store. I never knew good and hot traits could exist in the same person until that day. I had bumped into him, yet he was still worried about me. He paid for my items and we exchanged contacts, and I was looking for what I could do to get back at my husband and then this opportunity came. A hot and giving guy? I wasn't going to say no to his advances, and luckily I hadn't been wearing my wedding ring when I had gone out for that store run. I went on one date with my hot, handsome guy and we got to know each other, but before then we had already begun exchanging messages and texting on the phone. The texts had been harmless and not flirtatious at first, and then we went on the date and it was a magical experience for me. This was when my husband decided to come back from his hiatus wherever he had gone. A total killjoy, in my opinion. I was livid when I got back home and I saw him in the dining room eating out of the food that another man had paid for. If you were in my shoes, what would you have done? I was about to tear into him, and then he began to explain how he had been gone for a long time to make deals with partners and all the bees in the world. I didn't know if he was lying, but then he gave me a wad of $100 bills, and I was shocked into closing my mouth. My husband started being a husband again and it was cute to watch, but I still kept on with my talks with my hot, handsome guy. Let me call him Richard, although this wasn't his real name. Harmless talks. He was just asking when he could see me and that he really wanted to see me. I couldn't see him though. I told myself I loved my husband and I should have ended all contact with my hot, handsome guy then and there. But then one night my husband had gone on another of his trips and I couldn't sleep and I was feeling naughty. So I took a picture of myself naked and sent it to Richard who responded immediately by asking for my cash app in response. You guys, I couldn't believe it when I saw it. He sent me $500 just from sending him my nudes. I sent him another one and he sent another money. I was so shocked and surprised. This was how it began, you all. I just didn't know this was going to land me in trouble after all the enjoyment was said and done. Richard and I texted and flirted almost every day and at every hour. If I wasn't sleeping, I was on the phone with him flirting. We just texted and didn't do anything more. It wasn't actually classified as cheating if nothing was done right. It was not as if I was having sex with him behind my husband's back. We had just been texting and maybe a little flirting. Richard still insisted on seeing me though and when I had finally planned to see him, my husband returned once again and said he wanted to take me out for date night. And it just happened to be the same restaurant that Richard had booked for us to see. So I had to hide most of the time while we were at the restaurant. And I kept on getting texts throughout the time I was with my husband. Richard had probably been wondering where I was and kept shooting me texts. Luckily, I didn't run into him at the restaurant until dinner with my husband was finally over. He had noticed the various text messages and kept on asking what was happening. I lied that it was my friend that needed assistance with something, so she was probably texting me because it was urgent. I then told him I had to go to her house to see what she wanted. My husband had insisted on dropping me there, but I managed to convince him that I was fine going alone, 
and I didn't want to disrupt his plans for the night. My husband left me at the restaurant, and when I finally texted Richard that I was at the venue, he replied and said he had left already. You see, I hadn't run into Richard, but it turned out that he had seen me. He told me when everything went to shit in my life. But anyway, I didn't receive any text from Richard for over three months, and my husband was steady at home and began pushing for us to have a child. It seemed his business expansion had pulled through, and he finally had the money to get what he wanted and build his dream family. But my interest was already in Richard. I'd been wondering why there was no contact from him. The thought so preoccupied my mind that I didn't show much interest in the bedroom whenever my husband wanted us to try for a child. And he noticed it and chalked it up to that I didn't want to have a child and got livid. He hadn't known what was going through my mind then. Then my husband decided to stop buying me lavish gifts and giving me allowance money. All of a sudden. Then he stopped coming home. I don't know what was it with that man, my husband, and trying to test me by disappearing from the house. He thought it affected me, but he didn't know absence didn't make my heart grow fonder. It made my heart grow distant Lowell. It only affected me when he decided to stop giving money. Then I had to hunt him down. I knew he was sleeping at the office because he usually sent his PA to our house in the morning to get him some fresh clothes. So he was sleeping at the office because I refused to give him a child or be interested in our dealings in the bedroom. He was funny, but my mind began to forget about Richard and I wanted my husband back. If there was one thing my husband was, he was petty. He would get revenge in the most awful of ways. I don't know how I hadn't remembered this fact before I had thought about cheating on him. My husband made me apologize to him so he could come home. I had to go to his office to grovel in front of his office people. I had even gone with food. I had to remember why I had fallen in love with him in the first place. This time things hadn't completely fallen apart and I thought I could move on from Richard and focus on my husband and the family we wanted to build. This was like the calm before the storm. I went to his office and my husband made me list out 20 reasons why I loved him and made me list out points on why he had to forgive me. LOL, I didn't want to lose my husband, so I did that. And all his office people were watching because he made me do it loudly. Like I said, my husband was petty. As if that wasn't enough, he said I was going to take him on a romantic dinner date to his favorite restaurant, and that was when he would forgive me. Lol, the roles had been reversed. At least he hadn't told me to get him something from a designer brand. That would have wrecked my savings in half. I could do a dinner date at a restaurant for him. And yes, he made me pay the bill. I told him to get dressed and ready. And then I took him to his favorite restaurant. We had been at the restaurant having a cool and pleasant dinner. And I was beginning to remember all the reasons why I had fallen in love with my husband in the first place when the devil struck in the form of temptation. Richard texted me at that very moment a picture of his abs and wrote something flirtatious as a follow-up to the picture. Just like that, I was hooked once again. Like a spell had been cast over me and my husband vanished from my line of sight. I remember excusing myself from the table to go to the bathroom to get a good look at the picture and hot D asterisk man. The man was sexy. I sent a text to ask where he had been and he said he just needed to go away for a while, but he had missed me and my sexy body. And you guys I fell prey like a teenage girl getting a compliment from her crush. I had no idea this was going to ruin my life and I went along with it. I sent Richard a picture of myself in my dinner dress with my balloons popping out before going back to join my husband at the dinner table. I didn't need to get on my husband's good side again. My money machine had come back or so I thought. My husband and I left the dinner and I paid with the money Richard had sent me from the picture I had taken of myself as I was in the restroom and my husband had no idea that this was what was going on. We began trying for a baby again, and Richard and I continued our texting and flirting every day on the phone. I didn't want a baby, so I was secretly taking birth control pills. If I had a baby, my shape would be all disfigured and I would no longer be hot and attractive to men like Richard, so I couldn't have a baby. I didn't want my husband to know, so I had the birth control pills, and he started having frustrations about my inability to conceive. He then ordered that we go and visit a hospital to see what was wrong, and I got scared that I would be caught for taking the birth control pills. I didn't know a bigger thing was coming to end my marriage. I had no reason to fear because our test came back from when we had visited the hospital, and it said that my husband's sperm was weak and couldn't impregnate me by itself. Lowell, luckily that hadn't been my fault if not my husband wouldn't have allowed me to hear the end of it. While all these had been going on in my life and my husband was looking for ways to start a new home, I was still talking and earning money on the side with Richard. I didn't tell him I was married. If not, what was going on in my life would have been a great conversation starter. Richard wasn't pushing to see me anymore, and that should have been a first red flag sign. 
but I was too blinded by the money I was receiving. I hadn't even asked him what business he was into. I learned that the hard way. Once again, when things didn't go my husband's way, he disappeared into the solitude of his work. And at this point, I was great FYP for the reprieve from his constant hammering to conceive. He had learned he was the problem and it really hurt him deep. It was funny to watch, I mean, I didn't even need to take birth control pills. And it would have continued if my life didn't take a sharp turn for the worse. Richard began constantly asking me for naked pictures of myself and asking why I was delaying with sending him the pictures. He began to sound a little angry through his texts and I hadn't taken it seriously. I told him I would send it when I can. I thought that we had just been joking with ourselves because it had been a minute since we texted each other in a flirtatious manner. Well, I fell asking with my phone in my hand mid-texting because I had been tired and hadn't ended up sending the picture. Big mistake with Richard. The next morning I found a note in the mail and it was the very pictures I had sent to Richard before. My N asterisk to picturesque has been in the mail like someone had printed it and sent it to my house. I deluded myself that it couldn't be Richard. There was no way Richard knew my address. It couldn't have been him. I rushed to my phone when I saw the pictures in the mail and found the texts of Richard. He had sent me threats. The first one had said I shouldn't promise him something and fail to do it again, that it would guarantee me consequences that I wouldn't like. The second text told me to enjoy the pictures he had sent me in my mail. I was officially scared and put off. I had been sending an asterisk K asterisk D pictures of myself to a psychopath. I shot him a text to ask him what he was saying and that I didn't understand why he was acting like that and he just snubbed me and told me to await my next instructions from him. I had fallen prey to a chronic blackmailer and this wasn't even my main problem. So why had he been sending me money if he was going to turn around and ask me to send him money then? This had been my thought at first. I didn't know it wasn't going to be money that would end up being the point of the bargain. I hadn't known at all. Richard didn't talk to me again for about two weeks, but throughout that time I was always looking over my shoulder or checking the mail in hidden corners around my house in case Richard had played some sick twisted game and had hidden the pictures somewhere in my house for my husband to see. But there had been no pictures or no word from him for that duration of two weeks, and worry wanted to reduce me to shreds. How had he found out where I lived? I had never given him my house address throughout the time we had been texting, and the only time we had gone out on a date, he had never picked me up from home or dropped me off at home. Plus, I hadn't casually mentioned it in conversation. I wouldn't have let myself slip because I was too careful of the fact that I was already married. No one is more cautious than a married woman cheating on her husband. Richard contacted me after two weeks and said he needed to see me. According to him, we needed to meet to discuss business. And it was at this point I knew he didn't want to blackmail me for money. I preferred to stay in my home and then I had told him just exactly that and I found out that he knew I was married. He told me if he didn't see me at the address he had texted me with, he was going to expose me to my husband and my friends, and by the time he was done I was going to regret my life. I got scared, but I didn't know my husband was the main person I should have been scared about. He wanted me to get to the address, so on to the address I went. That was how I became Richard's tool because I was too scared to confess to my husband what I had done. I wasn't even scared, it was just that I had gone in too deep and there was no pulling out. I was just on a straight course for my downfall. I finally learned what Richard did for a living that he could send me all that money for every picture. He had been a money washer. I don't know a better term to use for it. Yes, he washed counterfeit money and did deliveries to those who needed it, and you would have never suspected. That made him a money launderer, right? And he wanted me to become his new delivery guy, or he was going to expose me to my husband. I had asked him how he knew I was married and he had laughed. Apparently I hadn't been so sly at the restaurant the other time and he had caught me with my husband and a wedding ring on my finger. He had put two and two together and he had grown livid because I had tried to play him when no one else did. So he vowed that he was going to get back at me and he was going to make me his delivery drug guy to his clients or he was going to tell my husband how we had had S asterisk X and I was cheating on him. We had never had sex before and I would never dream of even being with him once I knew what he was into but he was going to tell my husband that, and my husband was going to believe me. This was how I had set myself up and shot myself in the leg just for some money and to feel the attention of a man. Lol, I know most of you would probably be telling me I deserved it. Maybe I did. My life wasn't my own anymore, and I think this was when my husband began to suspect that something was off. Richard could pull me out of bed at odd hours to do a delivery for him, and my husband would ask me what was wrong. I had to lie that I had gotten a new job as a personal assistant to the owner of a multimedia company, and my husband was shocked. Shocked because I had got a job, 
and because I hadn't come to his company to get one. Well, technically, I hadn't lied. I had indeed become a PA to the owner of a company, all right. Just not a multimedia company like I had told my husband. Richard could pull me out of my house by 10 p.m. in the night. There was one time when I had sneaked into the house at around 1 a.m. in the morning and my husband had demanded I take him to my boss or quit my job because my boss was treating me like I was a robot. Wasn't I expected to have a life? Why was he making me work till 1 a.m.? How much was he paying me in the first place? I had no idea how I had managed to convince my husband that I was fine with the work, but apparently he let it rest. Or that was what I thought. But I should have known my husband better. How did I think I could have hid it from him? I should have just come clean in the first place and dealt with the consequences then instead of what I was facing now. Richard didn't stop calling me up and he wasn't paying me. No, I was doing free labor because he held my life in his hands literally. Did I ever get fed up? Of course I got fed up with him, but I couldn't dare do anything. There was a time I hadn't made a delivery like how I was supposed to, and the next morning I found a letter in my mail that detailed how I took birth control pills because I didn't want to get pregnant for my husband and the exact location of where I stashed them alongside pictures of me as I had taken the pills. I had been shaken to my core that day and I knew it was Richard's doing. I just didn't know how he had been doing it. It was like he had been monitoring my life for loopholes to use and blackmail and keep me in his service. I couldn't believe it either that someone would stoop to the very earth just to bring about your downfall, all because I had lied that I wasn't married. And it wasn't as if I had lied. I had just omitted it in the information I gave him when I had introduced myself. Plus, he hadn't asked, so how was that any of my fault? I had thought Richard was the biggest of my problems. I had no idea my husband had been gearing up for me. He was having me followed, and when I had gone to meet up with Richard, that was when I was busted. Richard had asked me to meet him to do our regular drop, and on that day I was going to tell him my mind and face the stupid consequences. I swear I was going to confess everything to my husband that day and hoped he forgave me because I was tired of being someone else's puppet. But my husband beat me to it. I was in the hotel room counting money I was meant to deliver, and my husband barged into the room and his eyes landed on me, and I knew what it had looked like, lol. Richard had been laying down beside me on the bed while I sat up and counted money, and it was like I had just been paid for sleeping with him. My husband shook his head and grew livid but stormed out instead of lashing out. I ran out of the hotel room and chased after him, but he had already entered his car and sped up. I got home and found him throwing my things outside the house and I got on my knees and pleaded with him that it wasn't my fault, that I had fallen into a temptation. Apparently my husband had become suspicious of my new job, so he had hired a private investigator to spy on me, and that was when he found out that I had been seeing another man behind his back. I shook my head that it wasn't like that at all. I had to show him the text between Richard and I and how they had just been about us flirting and how I had never slept with him but that seemed to make him all the more angrier because I had been sending hot pictures to a guy I didn't know. He had also seen the mail on how I had been taking birth control pills. By that time, he had already begun suspecting that something was off, so he had kept the letter to see what I was going to do with it. My husband was so hurt by the fact that I hadn't wanted to have his baby. I begged and begged, but he threw me off of him and called the police on me that I was a suspect of money laundering. I got arrested, and while I was trying to sort out my bail, my husband sent me divorce papers, which I had to sign, or he was going to take drastic action. I signed it immediately and used all my savings to bail myself out going to jail for a scheme in which I was just an ignorant delivery man. Of course, Richard was long gone, and I explained to the police how I had landed myself in the situation in the first place. I told them how Richard used my pictures to blackmail me to become his delivery person. I didn't have solid evidence, but I had the letter and the conversations we had when I was still flirting with Richard. I was charged to court, but because there was nothing linking me to the scheme except what I had told the police. I was given the option of paying a fine, which I used my last savings to pay. I got out at night and didn't have anywhere to stay, so I went back to my husband's house. Before then, I had checked my phone and had seen many missed calls from my friends telling me that they had seen my N asterisk to pictures all over the internet and was wondering if I knew anything about that. I believed it was Richard's doing, but on getting to my house, my former house, I found a party ongoing and there was a slideshow inside and you could clearly see they were my pictures. Although the body was blur, my face was showing clearly. I met my husband's eyes and he was smiling as men had been guffawing about my pictures. He walked up to me and said that why should I only let one man see my body when the whole world could see it? He had been the one to put up my pictures on the internet for the whole world to see. I ran out of the party and haven't set sights on my ex-husband. 
Well, there was no way I could see him as I had moved to a different city because of the shame and the embarrassment. I couldn't get a job because the first thing people would see when they pull up to search for my name on the internet was my N asterisk to pictures. My ex-husband had ruined me for life and I had learnt my lesson never to trust anybody. I'm currently staying with my parents on their farm until I can figure out what next to do with my life and hopefully deal with this trauma. All of my friends had abandoned me and never called to check up on me or even ask what had happened between me and my husband. I guess they had all sided with my husband and left me to suffer the consequences of my actions, even the one that had advised me to start an escort business. I wonder if her boyfriend knew that was what she was doing. My parents didn't know anything about what happened with my husband and I. I had just told them I had been divorced because my husband and I grew out of love. Hopefully they believe me and don't try googling my full name on the internet. They'll be scarred for life at what their daughter has been diminished to. I hope I move on from this and find meaning to life again, and I hope you all learn never to trust just anyone.